President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. Mr. Winnes, are you ready now? Winnes, yes, I'm ready, Mr. President. President. And the floor is now given to the Deputy International Court Prosecutor to resume the questioning. You may now proceed. Merci. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, witness, I'm going to ask you to listen to my questions carefully because you're testifying by video link and try to answer these questions as clearly as possible uh, without getting sidetracked into uh, details that were not requested from you. Uh, so regarding uh, the organization of Division 801, you already spoke to us about Tatsarun, who was the commander of the division, and you also spoke about Tassan. Who was Tassarun's immediate superior? Answer. I do not know who uh, the immediate supervisor of Tasa Ruin in that division. I only knew that Tasa Ruin and Tasa were commanders and uh, how he communicated uh, to the upper echelon. I do not know about that. Well, indeed, I was not speaking about the fact that uh, there was uh, a superior within Division 801, but who was Tassarun's superior because he was the commander of Division 801, and were his superiors placed elsewhere, for example, uh, at uh, General Staff uh, in uh, Phnom Penh? Human. Answer. What I knew, what I know is that he made the report uh, via radio communication to general staff had squatter in Phnom Penh, and that location uh, was Sun Sen's office, who received uh, the information by uh, radio communication. Fine. Beyond the radio message, would Tassaron travel uh, to Phnom Penh on a regular basis for meetings? Answer. When he was immediately in Rotanakiri province, one month after his arrival in Ratanakiri, he uh, went to Phnom Penh, and because of road condition, bad condition of the road, he went to Phnom Penh uh, once in a while, from Ratanakiri to Karaches. Uh, they had to spend night, one night in the middle of the road, and from Kratjes to Phnom Penh, they uh, were on boat, so it spent, they spent much time traveling from uh, Ratnakiri uh, to Kratjes and then to Phnom Penh. You were in charge of radio communication within Division 801. Um, so do you know or did Tassarun tell you if he had to consult with uh, general headquarters, army headquarters, for any important decisions re involving security in his zone, whether it be regarding external or internal enemies? Que vous avez connaissance? Are you aware of the fact that he had to consult or not the party center or headquarters regarding these matters. Answer. The divisional reports to general staff consisted of uh, letters 
and I interpreted the information in that letter in secret codes. And I usually uh, interpreted the codes into letter and then letter into the code. The report was about the situation at the border and also about the internal affairs within units and the whole division. Mostly I saw him uh, writing about that information as I indicated in the report and he requested uh, for advice and suggestions from the upper echelon. And you said that he would ask for counsel from the higher echelons. So what was he expecting? Instructions or only recommendations? When he would ask uh, for the uh, opinion of uh, his superiors. Answer. Regarding the advice or instruction from the upper echelon, it was about the instruction of the complicating issue at the border in relation to medicines and uh, patient at the border. And he requested instruction or opinions from the upper echelon on other issues. Now, regarding the issue of uh, the internal enemies, that is to say the enemies who could bore from within, uh, in the division, in fact, uh, or regarding the issue of external enemies, such as the Vietnamese, would he then uh, ask for instructions uh, from uh, headquarters? Answer. I happen to see an issue in that letter, and at that time, I put the letter of Tazarun in an, env in an envelope. I, together with other two people, uh, had to uh, take that letter to the general staff. We were on a motorbike, three of us, from Rotanakiri to Karaches province, and during that uh, journey, we had to spend a night uh, in the middle way. And after Kratjes, we spent uh, the whole day to travel to general staff. And I did not uh, see the content of that letter or the message. I, my role at the time was to deliver to the general staff and the on the top of the letter, on the top of envelope, it says uh, to Bong Kiu. Fine. So under which circumstances were you obliged to carry these letters rather than sending telegrams. Were these letters confidential? Did Tassarun tell you that these were important letters? Answer. To my li limited knowledge of the Democratic Cambodia's affairs, Some issue had to be communicated in a confidential way. It could not be communicated in an open fashion. I was the one who decoded and encoded the messages and was in charge of delivering the messages via radio communication. I did not uh, know fully all the content of messages, so I 
did not know whether that letter at that time was a confidential one. I did not dare to open the envelope to read the content. Man uh, was with me at the time delivering uh, the letter to general staff. Fine. So you didn't really answer my previous question, however, and here I'm speaking more about radio communication rather than carrying letters. In uh, the correspondence uh, regarding the reports uh, that you would encrypt or not, so did the correspondence uh, speak about enemies warring from within or about enemies uh, from the outside? And regarding these issues, did Tassarun ask uh, uh, Bong 89 or Son Sen, therefore, uh, instructions on how to manage uh, these problems. Answer. I have never seen the content of the messages made mentioning about the enemies uh, borrowing from the inside. I have never seen such uh, content in the messages. Well, we'll get back to this uh, later uh, with uh, certain documents that I will read out to you. Now, quickly speaking, the headquarters of Division 801, where you worked um, in the Radio Communications Department, uh, can we say that uh, this, the headquarters were in uh, Ban Lung at first, and then uh, they were moved to Vong Sai? Answer, yes, that is correct. And until when did you work at the headquarters uh, of Division 801 in Vung Sai? Answer. Upon my arrival in Rotanakiri province, first uh, I was posted at Ban Lung. And uh, because uh, the location there consisted of uh, mines on the land and there was not uh, much space to install an office, the division moved the headquarter to another location. First, we, we wanted to be stationed in Lumpat, the provincial town of Ratanakiri during uh, some that uh, period. I, at the time, was on a vehicle with him to examine the location. And when we arrived at the location, we asked uh, people in the cooperatives and they said that location was a, a flooding area during the rainy season. And after receiving information, we came back to our previous office and we decided to move to Vernsai. I had never been to Vernsai to observe the location before we moved there. After I went uh, with him uh, from the location that we wanted to uh, stay, he from time to time went to observe a location which uh, appropriate for the headquarter. Fine. Fine. This was a rather lengthy answer to a very simple question, so I'm going to ask you once again to please answer in a more precise way, uh, if possible, given uh, that our time is counted. Thank you. You said in uh, WRI E39734 at answer 7 that uh, you worked at the headquarters of Division 801 until you got married, which uh, 
was on 27 March 1977. Is that correct? Answer, that is correct. Then, were you assigned to the re-education center at Okansang, which was located close to Ban Lung in uh, Region 102? Bah. Answer, correct. Who selected you to work there? And did this person tell you why you were selected to work over there? Answer, I do not know the reason I was moved to be in that location. And the one who reassigned me through that divisional office was the head of the office. He told me to move to be stationed in Ban Lung. Did he tell you which duties you were to exercise at uh, the Okan Seng Re-Education and Security Center? Mon Answer. Before I left, the evening before that, uh, Sien told me to uh, pack up a belongings to meet Da Cheng in Ban Lung. And who was Da Cheng? And can you tell us if it is he? who uh, uh, assigned specific duties to you? The chain was in charge of uh, logistics. He was the head of logistics. And after I arrived in Ban Lung, I met him. So I must understand that he was working as the head of logistics within a unit uh, called Unit 806 or a Battalion 806 that was in charge of logistics within Division 801. Is that what I must understand? Correct. In and once you arrived at Okan Seng, can you tell us what your duties were on site and who was the head of the security center. Upon my first arrival, I was uh, with Da Chen, and I, at the time, was not uh, appointed any position. Let me put my question to you again. So who then became the head of uh, the Okan Seng Security Center? Answer. Upon my arrival at the change location, half a month later, I saw an individual by the name Sai coming to the change location. And what was uh, size duties? What were size duties? Answer. After I left Ban Lung to work close to the stream at Old Consign, Simeon came to appoint Sai to be chief and Tim was part of Unit 806, became the uh, deputy chief and I was a member. Uh, 
I will get back to that point uh, because uh, it's not quite clear to me. I'm going to, for example, read out to you what you said uh, in your WRI E3 slash 9734, where the following is stated at answer six. The security center was attached to Battalion 806. And Ta Cheng was the first person to lead the center. After one week working at the center, Ta Sei, Ta Sai, also uh, took on his duties. Later on, Ta Sai was appointed commander Term deputy commander and I member. End of quote, free translation. And I would like to get back, therefore, to an another quote which I c in which you said that you were the deputy in charge of interrogating and that team was a member. So can you tell us if that changed over the course of time? Were you the deputy or were you a member? And what were team's duties? Um, answer. So I was the chief and team was the deputy chief and I was a member in charge of compiling the confessions or answers from the detainees. And what were team's specific duties within the Okanseng Security Center? And uh, which unit did he lead? Answer. Team was in charge of security guards at Okansai. Does, does that mean that he was in charge of uh, organizing the work of the guards, in particular supervision, supervising the security center, watching over the prisoners, and Possibly executions. Answer, that is correct. 